Hi, and welcome to Forensic Entomology. Forensic Entomology is the study of insects and how those insects uh, aid in legal investigations. Uh, there's three main areas of application for entomology and forensic entomology. Uh, it's insect damage to structures, so termites, uh, carpenter ants, and how they uh, eat through wood, for instance, to create uh, unstable structures. Uh, infestation of foodstuffs, so uh, large amounts of grain being eaten away by insects or crops being destroyed by insects. Uh, and then finally, insects that inhabit human remains. Uh, this is the category that we are going to focus on in this presentation. Uh, general Generalities that you need to know. The life cycle of insects are the same for all insects. Uh, the two main insects or groups that we're going to look at are diptera, which are flies, and cloptera, which are beetles. Beetles and flies both go through the same metamorphic cycle. So they all start out as eggs, and then the eggs will hatch into larva, and then the larva will turn into a pupa, and then from the pupa it will uh, emerge as a fully grown winged adult. Uh, as far as flies go, when flies turn into larva, that is when we call them maggots. So if you've ever found maggots on, uh, for instance, rotting meat uh, or on something, it is the larval stage of the fly. The uh, time of death uh, can be determined based on the insects that are at the body. Uh, there is a specific succession uh, or order that the flies and the beetles will go to a body. So you can determine or estimate the time of death based on what insects are there at that time. Uh, diptera is one of the main insects of death. So those are all your flies. Uh, flies can arrive within minutes uh, of death. Blowflies are usually the first ones to show up. Uh, they will lay their eggs in the soft, mushy parts of the body, okay? So, uh, stomachs, uh, openings of your body, so mouths, eyeballs, that is typically where they are going to lay their eggs because those are the squishiest or softest parts of the body. Uh, and then more insects will start to arrive after the blowflies. You'll have flesh flies that arrive. Um, and then at the very end, house flies will uh, arrive afterwards. But blowflies are the first ones to show up. As far as beetles go, or the coleoptera, uh, rove beetles are typically the first ones, uh, and then hide beetles are the last ones. Uh, some beetles will feed on the corpse itself, so they'll eat the tissue that is left or uh, any of the materials that is left on the body. Uh, or they will feed on the maggots that were laid on the body. So they'll eat the fly larva. Uh, and sometimes they're just there to eat other beetles. There are some variables that affect metamorphosis. So how quickly the insect will move through its life cycle. Uh, the temperature is one of them. The higher the temperature, uh, the faster the growth. Uh, however, there is a temperature which is about 35 where it will actually plateau. Um, so, uh, as you can see on the chart, uh, the number of days decreased as the temperature increased. So how long it took them to move through uh, to the third instar, so the third larval stage. Habitat is another one. Uh, there are specific species that will like specific places on Earth better than others. Uh, so these two flies, uh, they like a specific climate or habitat in which to live in. Uh, the fly on the left will prefer the shade, and the one on the right likes sunlit areas. So if you find uh, the one that likes the shade... Uh, and the body is in full view of the sun, 
then you know that when that fly arrived, it was dark or in the shade at some point. Some other applications of forensic, forensic entomology, so other things we can use uh, bugs for. Uh, so identifying damage to structures, clothing, foodstuffs, that one's kind of a given. Uh, it can also help us with locations of wounds on a corpse. Uh, I have a friend that worked in the uh, medical examiner's office in Phoenix, uh, and they had a case where they had a man come in, and he had been in a fight. Uh, it was apparently a knife fight, but what they could see, uh, there were um, some wounds on his hand for defensive wounds, uh, but there was nothing else that they could really see. Uh, my friend put the body in the freezer at the morgue, and then they finally got to it, uh, to the autopsy a couple days later, and when they removed the body, uh, his stomach had a mass that was moving, okay? It was about a basketball-sized mass, and it was just moving underneath the uh, sheet. So when they pulled it back, they found that there was a basketball-sized mass on this man's stomach where he had been stabbed. Um, side note, I found out that maggots, when they're feeding in such a large mass like that, uh, that they sound like Rice Krispies and milk. Kind of gross, but an interesting side bit. Uh, so they were able to uh, investigate and look for more wounds within that area. Uh, it can also link a suspect to a scene of a crime. Uh, there's been cases where uh, a spider or an insect is found on the uh, suspect, uh, and they were prevalent at the crime scene. Uh, sources of contraband. Uh, there's types of insects that can trace vehicle movement. So every time we drive, we can't avoid all of the insects in the world. So we're going to have insects that hit the front of our grill as we drive. So we can actually locate or tell where a person has been based on the insects that are found on the front of their car. Uh, based on the insect migratory paths that they have. Uh, you can also determine the presence of drugs in a corpse. So you can actually test the insects uh, and test their toxicology to determine what was found inside the corpse. That is it for the forensic entomolo entomology lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.